All right, welcome back. So today we wanna to talk about what specific testing needs to be done to be able to fully evaluate the thyroid. So when we look at a lab test, most doctors in your PPO, your HMO, are gonna be running the standard thyroid test, which is usually only gonna be TSH, T4, and maybe if you're lucky, T3. And this is gonna be determined solely on your insurance. So the insurance is going to dictate what the doctor can actually run to be able to evaluate the thyroid. So when we actually take a step outside the box and we see what actually needs to be run to be able to fully evaluate the thyroid, there's a lot more markers that need to take place to be able to fully evaluate that. So when we look at those thyroid markers, what do we need to run? And these are the lab tests that you need to be asking your doctor to run on you so that you can see the full picture with your thyroid. So on previous videos, we had talked about how TSH is not even produced by the thyroid, so that's just an indication of pituitary function as it feedback loops to the thyroid. So yes, TSH does need to be run, but it shouldn't be the sole gold standard of evaluating thyroid function. So then again, we also need to look at T4, T3, but we wanna be looking at the actual free form. How much of this is actually able to be floating around in the blood that is not bound to anything? We want that number as well. So that's gonna be free T4 and then free T3. We are also going to want to know antibodies because a lot of people in this country have autoimmunity to their thyroid. It is actually estimated that almost 85% of people who have hypothyroid uh, symptoms is actually Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune component where your immune system is actually turning on your own thyroid tissue and creating that dysfunction. So we want to see, do you have antibodies to your thyroid tissue? Because that's a whole different ballgame. That's not just hypothyroidism. You have an autoimmune disease at that point, which needs to be looked at a little bit differently. So we want to be testing the TPO antibodies and the thyroglobulin antibodies and if those ever come back positive on a test, your immune system has flagged that. And oftentimes I'll get patients coming into my office who have high antibodies, but their doctor tells them that they have nothing wrong, that they don't have the autoimmune disease. Well, that's kind of incorrect because if your body has immunity against your thyroid, then yes, that is an autoimmune disease. Just like if you had RA factor, you'd have rheumatoid arthritis. You have to take the two the antibodies and the symptoms and correlate the two to be able to diagnose that. So we want to be looking for those antibodies. Then we also want to be looking at reverse T3. And we talked about how important reverse T3 is on the previous video because that is going to be telling us how much is actually getting converted in ratios to the actual T4 that's getting converted to T3 in the liver as well. So we want to see that ratio, how much of it's, because in normal amounts, 20% should be going to reverse T3, but if let's say 50% is actually going to reverse T3, that's not usable and that's gonna create dysfunction uh, in your body. We wanna be looking at T3 uptake and we also wanna be looking at free thyroxine index. So those are gonna be big things that we wanna be looking at on lab work. And the problem is with standard medicine is that usually this is all they're testing for. So let's say you're having issues over here or right here, that's gonna be missed on your lab work and that could be the main reason why your labs come back and your doctor tells you that your thyroid looks great, but you still feel terrible. So I hope you learned a little bit. Again, if you're not getting these markers run by your doctor, you need to be asking for them or you need to find a doctor that will actually run them on you. I will see you on the next video.